Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the End Time Watchman. And the title of the program for today is I Look Beyond the Exterior. God is saying, I look beyond the exterior. And what he, he uh, is saying here today is that uh, referring to man, referring to all of us, uh, he says he's not he's not looking on the outside of us the exterior part of us but he's looking on the inner side of us the inside of us so he's looking beyond the exterior we can only see uh, so far but God who is all seeing can see way beyond where we are able to see and he's reminding us today that he is looking beyond the exterior what does that mean exactly we're going to go into that today back in the days of the prophet Samuel Samuel was asked by God uh, to go to Jesse's house to anoint the next king of Israel uh, among his sons and uh, of course we know that uh, Saul was king in at that particular time but he has he had transgressed and God uh, purposed uh, to replace him and so Samuel was sent to anoint the next king and so he called for all of the sons to come uh, so that he could choose the one that would best look the part all of them came except the youngest who we know now to be uh, David he called them out to to look at them because humanly speaking that is our, our, our first instinct is is to judge uh, by the way something or someone looks and, and you know judging from how King Saul himself uh, looked at how he was when he was chosen to be king Samuel's first instinct was to find a king a similar looking king and we know that from the book of Samuel first Samuel chapter 9 and verse 2 uh, in describing Saul the the verse says Saul was the most handsome man in Israel head and shoulders taller than everyone else in the land so that is how King Saul was and so uh, Samuel thought that he would find someone similar to replace to replace him and so that is why he called out the sons to look to see who would fit that part but God had already chosen his king according to his standard according to what he is looking at not looking on the exterior but looking on the inside looking on the heart uh, Samuel could not see beyond the skin of course we are all humans we can see so far but no more so he only could see the outer layer of the man but God of course as we said before is different he's all seeing he's looking differently first Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7 tells us what God told Samuel uh, as he was doing this but the Lord said to Samuel, verse 7 says, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. Very important. When the Lord uh, talks about uh, looking on the interior, he is looking on the heart. For that is where everything that we are is stored up. The real us is stored up in the heart. And we cannot hide that. Whatever is in there eventually comes out on the exterior. You know, we can hide and pretend for so long. But eventually, what is in our hearts will come out see God bypassed uh, the outer layer and goes deeper down inside man to see 
who we really are. And it's not like God don't see, he doesn't see the outer layer, he doesn't see uh, our outside, he does. But it is not, uh, to him, it is not a determining factor in the judging of character. God looks at and examines where we cannot see. He examines and looks at our hearts. That is how God looks at each and every one of us. Not on what is on the outside, but what's on the inside. Luke chapter 6 and verse 45 says, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So this is a very important uh, lesson for all of us today. Uh, whatever you hear yourself saying, if you're always talking things that are not good, or things that are contrary to God and His and His character, then you know that is what's in your heart. And if that is what is in your heart, you know that is a very bad sign. So that is how we look at people. That is how we should judge people because that is how God looks at us. And that is how He Himself judges us and will always judge us to determine who we really are. And we will always get what we deserve, what we truly deserve. 1 King chapter 8 verse 39 says, Give your people what their actions deserve, for you alone know each human heart. God alone knows each human heart. So when he judges, he judges righteously. Trying to appear to be what, you, what you're not uh, may work with people, but it will never work with God because he can see the intents of our hearts. Jesus told the religious leaders of his day in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 15. He says, you like to appear righteous in public, but God knows your heart. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. God knows our hearts. We can pretend to be what we are not and we can fool ourselves we can fool others but we can never fool God so check your heart today uh, very sincerely and honestly because when you stand before God when you stand before God on judgment day what is in your heart will determine the outcome of his decision not how you uh, behave, uh, not how you act, not how you look, but what is in your heart. What you can hide from another person simply because we cannot see, you cannot hide from God. You will always receive what you deserve, no more and no less. So knowing this fact and, and understanding this is very important. It will help uh, to guide your feet, to guide your steps, and it will help you to always make the right decision and choices, even when behind closed doors, knowing that God can see everything and he knows everything. But you cannot truly and fully know and understand these things uh, before getting to know God himself for yourself. So the aim here is to get to know God for yourself. Get to know him personally. Get to know God for yourself. Accept him as Lord and Savior. Study his word daily. Speak to him daily just like you would do someone else that you want to get to know that is how you should do with god communicate with him have that communication where you read his word listen to him and you speak to him 
in prayer. Get to know him for who he is so that you can be who he wants you to really be. First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9 says, Learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. He will reject you forever. We don't want to be in that category. So we want to seek the Lord today. And as we cross over into 2023, God's willing, let that be a resolution that you not just make, but you keep to seek the Lord and to find him and to get to know him in the way that you should so that you can be who God wants you to be. Recognizing and knowing and understanding that God, he does not look on the exterior when he judges, but he is looking on the interior. He is looking on or in the heart and that is where all the truth is stored up about us and he will judge according to those truth that is in there whether good or whether bad and we will get what we deserve according to what's in there so understand that know that and act accordingly make the right choices make the right decisions and that starts with accepting jesus christ as lord and savior and get him to know him intimately get him to know him personally for yourselves and just before we come to a close as usual i want to end with this short message of salvation because i know there are those of you out there who are watching or listening who have not yet uh, taken that first step in uh, coming to Jesus Christ and giving your life over to him, which you need to do now because time is fast running out. Salvation is still available. You have breath, you're breathing, you can see, you can talk. Don't allow another moment to pass without making this all important decision today. Why? Because the next five minutes is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. We can die at any moment. Jesus Christ can come at any moment. And so he wants us all to be ready for that first uh, taken away or what we call the rapture. He wants us to be ready for the rapture so that we can escape what is coming to the world afterwards, which is not good. So come to Jesus Christ today. Salvation, as I said, is still available and all of us, we need it. That is why the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 that no one is righteous, not even one. Why? Verse 23 of that same chapter says, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. That is why we need Jesus and that is why he came into this world. That is why he gave up his life. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins so that we would uh, not have to pay the price or the penalty for our sins. He took the punishment that we deserve so that we would not have to get it ourselves. How wonderful is that? What is a punishment? Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 tells us for the wages of sin is death. And that is, uh, that is eternal uh, separation from God in that lake of fire that the, uh, the book of Revelation talks about. And it's not a place that God wants any one of us to end up. That place, it was not created for us. Hell was not created for man. It was created for the devil and his angels. And so we must recognize that we uh, sin cannot get into heaven. And when we all cross over into eternity, we will uh, have to spend our time in either heaven or hell. They're out there. Those are the only two 
choices. And if we don't uh, get into heaven because of sin, we will have to spend our time in the lake of fire with the devil and his demons. That verse tells us the wages of sin is death. But it goes on and gives some good news. It says, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The free gift. It is a free gift that God wants to hand over to us today. So all you need to do is to open your hands and accept it. Think of all the free gifts that you prob probably received this Christmas. You did not have to buy them. You did not have to pay the person for them. You just opened your hand and you accepted it. This is how God wants to hand over his salvation to you, his blood-bought salvation as a free gift. It cost him everything, but to you, it's a free gift if you would just only receive it. How can you receive it? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. That is why again it says in Romans 10 verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, no one is exempted. And we have this privilege and opportunity because of Jesus Christ. He came into a dark world to shine his light so that we may be able to see the way forward. He says in John chapter 12 and verse 46, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. So all we need to do right now is to put our trust in Jesus. Come to him and surrender your lives to him. Ask him to forgive you of all of your sins and he is more than willing to do just that right away. He will not wait. He will not tell you to come back tomorrow or come back in the next five minutes. If you ask for forgiveness right now, you will receive it right now. That is how wonderful God is. So make that very important decision now before it is too late, recognizing that tomorrow is not promised to you or anyone for that matter. And on that note, we'll come to the end of the program for today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time if there is a next time. God richly bless you and Happy New Year when it comes around. Bye-bye. Don't forget that to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Curtis Minister Roach. Minister Curtis Roach. Or our page, The End Time Watchman. Just leave me a message and I'll reply at my earliest. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be blessed by the hundreds of videos available to you. Please feel free to share any video to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Should the Lord continue to tarry, see you next time. God bless.